Alright, back from lunch. And I'm going to show you how easy dope is to repair. Don't panic when shit happens. There, there's a... When I peel the tape up, it peel the paper off, down to the wood, and I put a hole. It's about the size of a BB hole right there. Well, obviously that has to be repaired. So we're going to get some silk span and some dope. And try to quick repair this so I can continue on taping. Fortunately for me, there's a color change there. There's a little piece of silk span laying right there on the table. Uh -huh. So. Tear the silk span, it's about the size of a quarter, all the way around, all rough edges. Where's your uh, brush, small brush? Then we're going to spray this with the Windex tight material. That was small brush. A brush. What's wrong with this brush? It's red in it. It's probably not good then. Because the minute that I start painting it, the red will come out. Yep. Got plenty of thinner in there, so there should be a good bond. I'll wait a few minutes and then hit it again. We'll get three, four coats of that on there, and then I'll spray it with an airbrush. cord in there, put a cord in it where it will loop and cinch tight and get down on the spigot where the hose screws on it down on that's where it's supposed to go on there. On the spigot? Down where the threads are at on it. Where the hose screws on to it. Really? The part sticking down, that's where it's supposed to go on it. I've always put them on the other part. Okay, let's see what you guys have to say, if anything. I don't know. This one's got a cross thing on it. They both I've always put them on the other parts, too. Yeah. So 
my cat for. Okay, nobody, everybody knows what they're doing. <laughs> everybody knows what they're doing, so that's good. Bully for them. You know what we could do while we're waiting for this to dry is we could start putting the checkerboards on the bottom. Except I gotta go downstairs and make up the the fixings. That's the only bit bad thing about these live streams, I can't pause them, you know what I mean? Yeah, you just gotta leave the room. Down there, pretty thick. The bad thing is, it won't, don't mean nothing. Yeah, it'll go down and nothing. You might, look at this side, too. You might be right about needing 100%. Yep. Yeah. Well, you entertain them. I'll go down there and I'll go down there and pick out those other ones. Except I guess it don't matter. It can go either way. No, it can't. It has to be picked the correct way. Yeah, you gotta have the right one. So I'll go down there. We we gotta get measuring equipment, tape, and. Kind of just gotta have the checks. I haven't picked them, and the. Uh, I mean, it'd be easier just to go down there and do it. I guess we could tote the camera down there. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, you're gonna have to. Uh... It'll take a few minutes. Okay, vomit cam. <laughs> See, I gotta make sure that I got this right here. We gotta start the inside one. Has the inside to be... back one has gotta be a white one. They turned over the inside back one's gotta be a white one. First one no, has no. gotta be picked. The first check has to be picked. Yeah, because you need a white one on the bottom. Well, actually, they're exactly the same. First one needs to be picked. I got it. First one to my left has to be picked. Just be, don't pick them down there, just cut it. In all the places you gotta cut it. And we need the glass to smooth the paper down. First one needs to be picked. I'll, I'll 
I got it. That kind of threw, threw us back a couple of hours, that little problem. But don't panic. Okay. That's the left, and on the right, on the right, it's uh, the other way, right? This is outboard wing here. And it still comes out the same way because you can turn that backwards and it makes it the opposite. You know what I mean? Six, seven. Want to stick and never stick on there in a million freaking years. Okay. You know, I got Wendy's spinner mold, so I, I don't know how to shape that spinner look.
I don't see why we have to have carbon. Why can't we just have fiberglass? We don't have to have carbon. Now, carbon is just a status symbol. So it is. And when I go home on the Christmas holiday, you can bet I'm going to make a gas tank because I'll have that uh, thing sanded out ready to go. Sanded and polished. It would have been nice if they'd have took care of them. Yeah, well, they didn't. If they were taken care of, they'd still have them. I bet that's right, too. Gotta redo these things. These up, they wouldn't take that much to finish them up. And then I could try it again. Get some more aluminum and <clears throat> some more aluminium. <coughs> Need a longer ruler. Bring that long ruler again. It's right there. Bring it closer to Bitten. Those aren't the best knife blades to be doing that with. You got dull, three. Exacto blades, and they're stiffer. They flex too much. I'm not sure it down here. Getting dull. Don't rub it on the glass. This is the hard one to put on. I don't know who said it, but you make it look easy. <laughs> Yogi, yeah, it looks really easy. Not. Go ahead and give it a whirl. This giant headache. And it is a lot easier than hand taping every one of them.
Yeah, it saves a, a day's labor, probably. Oh, yeah. Got to take and spray twice. It takes, it took me probably 10 hours. I did it all in one day, but you know, it was drying time and retaping time and all that stuff. That took 10 hours. Order some more transfer tape. I brought some clear with me, but I don't really want to use clear on this. If you can't see that. <laughs> yeah, you almost need to clear though on some of the elaborate decal type things, especially if you're laying more than one mask now. <clears throat> There's a booger on that one. Watch that one, you might have to tape it. We'll see how it comes out. Yeah, you were talking about the guy handing you the tools. Mm -hmm. You and I are pretty much like that. I mean, yeah, we both know what's going on, what needs to be done. And it used to irritate me. And I'd get these old guys in there. Been doing that shit for 20 years. They'd be helping me out. I wouldn't know what to do. What would I do here, John? We're going to stand here and look at it <laughs> while you figure it out. And Gary, Gary used to piss me off to no end because it come 2 o'clock in the afternoon and he's packing things up. I said, Gary, we still got two more hours of work to go. And you're putting the tools up. <laughs>
Okay, we're ready for that. Because of this YouTube channel, you know, like I say, you know, I tell these guys I could do this job five times faster if I didn't have to dick with this camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not a good entertainer as far as talking while I'm working. Never have been. It ain't easy. And then you lose your train of thought. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? That's and why some I make of this stuff you can get turned around backwards so quick. That's why I make mistakes. I'm thinking of talking and thinking and that's how I get her done. Okay. Vomit cam. Back up the stairs to tape. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get these painted today. Probably get it taped today, but unless we have some other problem. I was truly surprised that paper was up. taping and retaping and all that stuff and you hadn't had a problem and so you know what it tells me there's not enough dough on it there. Wouldn't rub down good enough in that one little spot. Of course this is the lead out side that lead outs could have been right there. You know what I mean? Cause you not to
Christmas lunch. Lunch was okay. Expensive. Or khaki bell. Eighteen dollars for Taco Bell. Give me a break. Can't do that when you need is this. This will tell you where to lay your tape, where you put your tape at.
got a good the far side in it? No. Inside. Okay, move it back. The alcohol's not dry yet. That's what just skipping over that. I gotta figure out how to airbrush that. That'll take you 10 15 minutes to tape off and two and a half seconds to shoot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On this side over here is where I saw that line. Yeah, it. It's here, it looks like well, it's, it's on this side that I noticed, is that I thought I noticed. Now maybe it's just an optical illusion, a reflection from the yellow stab. But... It's, it's orange. Okay, they need to be, they need to be carded again. They're a little, they're a little bit flaky with nibs yet. Okay, I'm going to replace this piece of tape because it's got that butter in it. So we're going to start it right there. It's the forward mark. Remember that? Yeah, there on this side of the case. Okay. We'll get it figured out. When they used to lay flames out on motorcycles, there wasn't no pencil marks. You just no, it's free handed. Yeah. You try to make the left look like the right as best as you can, and well, that was the whole point. Striper always amazed me, you know, that they could go down the whole length of the side of a car, you know, and go as straight as a narrow line. Or sometimes they'd use a piece of tape on one side, but <clears throat> now look at this and measure one, see if my tails are close. I think this one's too far forward. Of course, here again we got different size wings. Within an eighth of an inch or sixteenth of an inch, we won't, won't worry about it. That one's three and a half. That one's three. Major close cut ones. Three and a half. Three. So somehow I got to come back. A half of an inch. Three. 
And that one's three? And this one's three. Three. Fifteen on that side. Fifteen on that side. Man, I'm good! <laughs> Not bad for eyeballing. Great. This has got to go forward? Yep. Remember, that's the long wing panel. So, oh, stop right there. Let's go from there. Or, oh, too much. Back, more back, 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 back. Right there. We're really not putting this down for keeps because I got this repair spot here. Of course, I don't know, it might be all right if I just, then I would just have to paint a little line white. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if there's enough dope on there to keep the paper from ripping again. There's only two and a half coats. I guess we're gonna get it laid out so we can lay the bottom out. Get it laid out. You're gonna just cut this off here. And yeah. Sort of get it in a spot and I'll touch it. Hit it. This side got to come back. This side got to come back a little bit. This, a little bit more right here. this tape don't bend, that tape bends. Well, I realize, but it will scratch. That's just the, the marker. Well, I beg your pardon. See, that's the line that'll show the most, those white lines. They're only an eighth of an inch wide, though they show real bad if you Tried to paint a white line on there instead of back masking. Well, that's what I did with that red line on mine and talked about the pain they asked to do. I know. Tape three times, pull the center piece of tape out. You know, some of them ink lines on my Thunderbolt <coughs> weren't ink lines, they were painted. Well, it's better if you can. If you can get away with painting and you can do it to an easy tape job. You're much better off to paint. And I would love to have painted every single panel line that I put on that airplane, but I'd have to do one line at a time. Line here, line here, line here, and wherever I had a line, tape that off. And, and now all I gotta do is pray for no pull-ups when when I paint it, I think maybe we should take the heat gun to it. Seeing that we had some, I had some problems already. 
Okay, let's see what it looks like. See, we didn't even press that down and it stuck. In. Yeah, but it's been not very sticky. It ain't as sticky as this yellow. No, it's not as sticky as that blue either, but it's still, it sticks down just good enough to use it. <laughs> and if you spray paint it twice, you can, it might bubble up on you. Scare me sometimes. It'll be fine. Measure that trailing edge and make sure that we're in the in the within the sixteen. What's it supposed to be? Sixteen in a piece of tape. No. We got three. Three and three quarters. Three and five eighths. Or yeah, maybe that's what it was. Three and five eighths. Quarter off or eighth of an inch off, it's got to go forward. Can't. Has to go. But it can't. It's about three sixteenths different. Three and three quarter here. Let's see what we got over here. A heavy five eighths. Eleven sixteenths. Three and eleven sixteenths. And eleven sixteenths. There's how much off right there. And then that you can see from one end to the other. From that side from that to this side. That side to this side. That, that's, you can't tell that. Yeah, that's that's off in the center by by that much. These are from here to here. That's not gonna guarantee you. Should be right on the tape. It's within the pencil line. Fuck it. I don't think you're going to notice it. I'm sure one of them guys with big screen TV loves it. Well. That's three and five eight. That's what it was supposed to be, three and five eighths. Well, you used a piece of tape on this line and that line. You used right. a piece of tape on this line and that line. So that brings it back to this one. Right. And the unequal weak weak. Wing panels, we're trying to compensate for a longer wing panel and make this gap the same. So this has moved everything sort of a little bit. I, I think it'll be all right. I don't think anybody's going to have to do it. Outside of the fact that the ones that are sitting here watching this, when they go look at the airplane, say, well, hmm, that is off a little bit. <laughs> a sixteenth of an inch. Yeah, it's uh, no, they're not going to tell that. You know, with as much problems we've, as we've had with this, I think we're going to get the checkerboards on it, and I am going to sunburst the bottom. There's not going to be any numbers on the bottom, except for in the middle of the fuselage. 
Might make for a nice contrast, wouldn't you? Just like when my Continental, when you pull up, it's got the checkerboard, you know, from red, white, and blue to black and white. It's a big contrast, yeah. It's like flipping on a light switch out there. Yeah. I like that myself. Still debating on the on the font. I think I want to see that font that's really swoopy looking. Yeah, because what I have in there is a pretty block brush stroke. That's what we typically use. Bada boom or bada boom was a good one. That's been on three or four of my airplanes in a couple of years. And yeah, it's over. It's just it's not a block square block it's military cartoon. looking it's a brush stroke sort of it's a cartoon letter yeah and, then, and some of the letters when you do the alphabet are really funky you know what i mean if you're spelling something out i had one like that where it went across and then one letter dropped down about three eighths of an inch and it was the same, I measured it. It was the same height as all the other letters. It just dropped down. And I'm going, well, that looks like crap. So I redid it to where everything was straight in there, even though that's not how it came out of the machine. Yogi says, you guys make it look so easy to do all <laughs> of this. Yes, you are good. <laughs> I'm just getting by. That's it. Well... You know, you do one or two airplanes a year and you relearn every time you do it again. It's just, you should have seen this guy down at this sign shop that I went to back when I built my Takano and he, he looked up these fonts. He had a hundred million fonts down there and he found the exact font for that Brazilian airplane. He found the, the font. Right. And he printed everything and that out in that font. And to watch this guy sit there and just weed this stuff out <laughs> about a hundred times faster than I was. And of course, if you walk back into the back, there is about 20 guys back in the back doing that exact same thing he was doing on different signs and whatnot. And I know. Banners and... You think that'll, that should cover okay? I don't cover. In red? I just hope there ain't no more of them. I'll get this taped off and I'll take it home and I'm I wasn't gonna leave it here, but I'll take it home and I'll do uh the, the uh Starburst. Well, no, the uh, the fonts, yeah, the lettering stuff. That'll be come back tomorrow. I swear, I'll be here an hour, and it'll be all done. It'll take an hour to untape. You know how I take them scallops, how, how they quick they go? Bang, one take. I gotta think about that starburst. I mean, I just. I don't think the starburst is the thing exactly. You're gonna have to tell, think about this. You're gonna have the checkerboard running around there. to here. It'd almost just be better, huh? Yeah, it'd be better to, to match it on the other side, but it's so hard to do. Yeah. Let's see. That'll paint easy. It's smooth. I need to get them pocket things in there. They are down in the box. Of course. Yep.
See, I know he said it before, but these paint jobs do really sort of evolve. When you start out with one thing, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to stick with that all the way through. start running into a problem, then you try to fix it. That may change your direction. You might change your mind on, you know, like fonts. Fonts. You, there's a billion fonts out there. At a least. billion. And a lot of them, there might be a thousand of them that are so close, you could almost put one over top of the other and look at it and it'd be the same. I think I want to get some white paint mixed up and spray that right there before we go any farther. I wouldn't be a bad idea. That's a pretty big spot. I pray that it doesn't happen again. Put a piece of tissue over it. No, I put no tissue on it. I didn't break the tissue. I didn't go all the way down the wood. No, I don't think so. Feel like it? No, it doesn't feel like it. Doesn't have that telltale rough texture to it. Not that fine the sandpaper you used was 600, so. I tell you what though, when I put that alcohol on that 600, it cut great. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> I don't doubt that. Got cut it right off. I mean, I sanded with it Sikkim's one time, and I didn't do it again. Because it cut so good that it just two swipes of that sandpaper and it was gone. And your paint was gone. <laughs> <laughs> now that white that you got mixed up there is insignia white, right? That's our white. It's not Sig white. I don't know. We haven't been painting with Sig White. This, is this what you painted your airplane with? Hmm. Well, I'll know in a second here. You shoot it on there, you'll know in a heartbeat. Me and that, what are you getting it out of? That, that's just ten and clear in that big jar. Oh, shit. Let me see if I got white in my box. I might have white in this box. I had planned on painting white, but I don't know that I brought it or not. Oh, I did. We well, got a whole gallon of it. Right yeah, but. It <laughs> My white here. This is what's this is what's left from that amount that I took. So you know there's no paint on this thing. Yeah. See? It's up to here. Like I say, guys, just because you got it doesn't mean you gotta use it. You got a muffler just like that? Yeah, pretty close to it. If not exactly the same. I may just do that, Sparky. I may just glue this piece in here 
and then just come up here and put me my two bolts in that cow that I'm making and put that muffler in there just basically like I did right here and it's always there if I need to you know it's always there's always a pipe tunnel that's already in there because there's not really a pipe tunnel all it is is a wall back here I could put a pipe tail on this, but the pipe would be hanging out because it, it it's not a guppy. I'm going to get a little teeny bit of it hanging out and let it rest on the wing. Get a windy coat on there.
got this going while we're waiting on this stuff to dry. See, if we can see this in this light, you get this outside, you never see it yeah. too bright. Now you get one of the guys that does one of those sort of tin and clear paint jobs on their airplanes. They look beautiful sitting on the ground. You pick them up and then when you see through it real good. We got lots of thinner and I got it on wet, so I guess that'll work there. Hopefully. Wait a second, turn it over and I'll do the wing tip. Maybe we can tape yeah, right that up. Works, but I can't put it down. Huh? Gotta let that spot dry. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm gonna get a Mercedes Benz. I guess we can try to lay this uh, this side out. Dan Fairy. He's making all sorts of tug mufflers. Not every one can make. He can come up with them. They actually look pretty nice. Got himself a little home CNC mill or something. Maybe here's what we do on the bottom. Instead of all that swoopy net business, just three straight stripes. Two straights and one angle. Yeah, but we'll start at the back. Yeah, that's what we'll do on the on that side because it ain't worth all the. There's a lot of ribbon rolls. Straight going. line here. This this first one will be tapered straight on the back. First tapered line that we tape is the back line, the yellow line. Then we come up to the next line. And whatever this line is, is what it is, and that's what you get. <laughs> yeah. That'll work. And don't worry about the uh, the turn in it. That turn is tough. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> that it is. So, I guess the first line to put on is that line right there. Yeah, my paint jobs always evolve as I'm doing them. Oh, you've oh, seen, day too. You've seen, yeah. seen that on the high roller, especially. You know, this is what I want to do. Oh, crap. We're going to be overweight. We ain't doing that. Scrap that idea. Do something else. <clears throat> yeah, well. <clears throat> they are what they are. up here at this this end
No. I think he didn't. I don't think he used the tape on that, did you? Didn't he just eyeball it? Yeah, I eyeballed it. I forgot. <clears throat> This is the hardest one coming right here. So we need uh, blue tape for the hinge. You know, nothing straight on this thing, so. We get away with this. Of course, you know, I'm putting that silver stripe on there. It really doesn't matter. No. But it's pretty good. If it turns out good, we won't put a silver stripe on it. <laughs> this one here, I'm going to have to tape because that thing cut, remember? Yeah, well, we'll pull this up like this when you put this long piece on there. Get it up there at 90 degrees. If you remember, the knife took a, a hike right there and it, it yeah. whooped up. variables you gotta play with on this thing. Building mirrors, sanding mirrors. Okay. Mistake. 
It's off of there. It's way off of there. Well, you're going to have to line it up into here and let that float. Um, just pull that piece of tape off there. Let's use some yellow on it. I'm probably going to have to use blue fine line because it, it exactly when I went crazy on it, remember? Yeah. some serious budging on this. I can see that coming. Yeah. I keep seeing that gear door in underneath all that stuff and it makes me think something's not that.
cheat this one. This one's got to get moved back a quarter of an inch, and that one's got to go forward, or eighth of an inch, and that one's got to go forward eighth of an inch to see if they look at the end here. Yeah, they're not lining them up. No. That's typical. You can see that this one goes back. I mean, mm -hmm. where's that knife? Yeah, oh, I see it. We'll get that cut off so it's not in the way. Tip will have to be done with blue tape. Oh, yeah. yeah. You'll cut a bunch of that plastic back, probably that stencil. Just hand taped everything out there. That's okay. That one's fine. Okay. I'll work on this tonight. It's dry? I don't know. It was sitting on it. <laughs> a, little, not. a little tacky. <laughs> I put a windy coat on it, make sure it sticks. <laughs> you want to make sure this line. But see, that line goes right over the top of that. That's to pull that paint up, so I gotta let it dry. Well, all this line is, it determines the end of this. Right. So... It only goes there. What we could do while we're waiting for that to dry is put on these lines back here. Yeah. We'll start with this very back line, which was 8 and 5 eighths, right? But 3 and 5 eighths. 3 and 5 eighths, yeah. Okay, get the ruler.
Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. I need to get my hand. I'm afraid to touch it. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. I'll have to work on that when I got it someplace it's not so either that or you hold on to it. Three quarters, right? Nope. I want that piece of tape that's on you, but I gotta have. I gotta oh, yeah, have, this is three eighths, isn't it? Yeah. I want you to hold the airplane right here so I can finish this tip up. Okay. what I want to do. You think I ought to spray some on here first? I wouldn't worry about it. I think I'd just go ahead and paint dog on thing, come back through and fix the little boogers. You know what I mean? I really think I would, because it's a lot smaller area. You can do it with an air gun. Well, let me sand that big thing. Even if you had to paint three colors here, how long would it take you to take this little thing off here and do shoot three different colors? In a minute. To sit here and let that dry and all that stuff. Just make sure you don't like you're done sand it. Make sure you don't have any bumps. Get that cut off until I get the other piece of tape on it. Why? Because I need to know how much tail I got so they go around perfectly like that. Right. Well, you, all you gotta do is cut it right there and then come down here and let it overlap. Yeah. Okay. Ready to put the knife here. Okay, hopefully that gets it. Now, if 
piece of yellow. goes up there like so. This tape is kind of wiped out. Wipe stick. Okay. Makes it easy when you don't have to do that turn. <laughs> yeah, I like to punish myself, so I put these tails on all of them. <laughs> like I said, punish myself. And that is definitely punishing yourself. Even on the bottom. You know, even though 
even though we measured that, and that's three and five eighths, it still looks like it sweeps forward. Yeah. It's because you're looking at it from the end. You got to look at it straight on. You got to hold it straight up in the air. Still looks like it goes forward to me. It must be because of this severe angle. Optical illusion, then. Personally, I don't see it. But I see those wingtips more than anything. Although, I mean, it looks pretty straight right now. Well, I moved it back yeah. a bunch. And I, what I'm going to have to do tonight is I'm going to have to cut this piece away and tape a line on there and then finish taping this off and then pull that down and tape a line on it. Yeah, you'll have to retape this whole out panel and almost all of this one. This is the long wing can, so we hit the eighth of an inch on the tape line. Right. right. Okay. spot there because this is orange. That'll cover good. A little white there maybe. A little maybe white in here. I just have to you know, take off the stripe. Yeah. It won't be much. The biggest thing is to make them these things look right around here and match top to bottom. That's the hardest part out of all of it. I got it. Because it doesn't matter whether you're you measure or not. You measure all you want, they still seem to be coming out different. So I take that into account as it's a sanding error or a building error or something that is not exactly straight. Almost. This will keep all, everything for your lettering and all that stuff the same, the same white area to put it in, unless you come up onto the, these lines. I'm going to do one, two, three, six, six down this way. I'm not going to monkey with that. Okay. Don't you, you don't have to have them on the bottom, actually. By eight, by... FAA standards, federal. Yeah, it's got to be on the uh, left underside and the right top side. Yep. Unless it's military. Military can pretty much do whatever now. We didn't have any numbers on the wings. Did you guys? <laughs> <laughs> lettering somewhere and said B-52, but... We had N-J-A-K, that was the ship designation, where where you're designated on the rudder. Let you know where it's stationed. And then up in front, it would be 01, 001, 002, 003, and then that would go through 10, and then it would go 201 to, you know... Yeah, well, we have a four-digit number up on the nose of the airplane, which is the aircraft number. That lets you know. No, that lets you know whose plane it is. That number, if it's yeah. squadron commander, was zero zero one. Okay, so zero zero two would be the XO, and so on down, so on and so forth.
Then on the on the ventricle fin, we had VF211, so we knew which squadron it was in. And we didn't have no damn numbers on it. We didn't have no bureau number on it. Yeah, there wasn't a lot of stuff on it. We didn't have a whole lot of no step, no push of that shit either. We did, but they were all painted camp green and camouflage and stuff, and you couldn't hardly see it. We had two red stripes on the intakes that said jet intake. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stand here, yeah, dummy. <laughs> you want to get sucked in here? You stand right here. But you know what's more dangerous than a jet intake? Exhausts. No. Exhaust, you just get blown down. The radar. Oh, well, yeah, you can get frightened. If you're standing radar. in front of the radome and they turn it on <laughs> and you start to get warm, you're dead. You're cooked. Yeah, it's microwave. <laughs> <laughs> the most, yeah. dangerous, most dangerous thing on a fighter jet is the brakes. Hydraulic fluid. If that thing catches fire in the magnesium wheel, you can't put them out. Yeah, magnesium, you can't. Can't put it out. You gotta rub all the oxygen from it because it creates its own. Well, we had all your standard warnings for jet engine and stuff, but nothing was any big and fancy because you didn't see it. You didn't see it. You guys watching on YouTube want to see a a movie that'll wake you up as an 18 year old kid they showed this movie called the man from locks and it's on youtube because i looked for it to see and that will tell you what happens when you get around liquid oxygen and grease <laughs> look it up after you're done watching this write it down the man from locks. I know they showed you all those horror films and stuff when you were in the service about ejection seats and oh, getting yeah. sucked into the intakes and all oh, that yeah. stuff. Oh, yeah. Guys walking into propellers. Guy walking along. <laughs> <laughs> Got to watch, how to watch out for 100 mile an hour toolboxes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Knuckleheads on the GSE. Yeah, please look that up on YouTube. The Man from Locks. And by the way, that guy didn't live that you'll see at the end. What happened was, an a, same, same rate I was, AMS, uh, he was an AMH, which is in the same airframes division, but I was structural, they were hydraulics. He had his, we had those jumper pullover blouses, and they were rolling. He had it all full of hydraulic fluid. His whole blouse, you know, being messy and not clean or whatever. And he got liquid oxygen on him and whoo! I mean, spontaneous combustion. Pretty wicked stuff. Pretty wicked. <coughs> I don't want to touch it, but I know it's still carrying it. Looks it. I mean, I could probably take over it. You're only coming back to right here for right now. No, got to come all the way back to here. Well, well, with that line, why do you need that line all the way back there when right here is what controls it? Well, that doesn't control anything. We what controls it are these. Yeah, then it con this controls your in and out. And we can we can put that on there, then the next piece on there if you want. Make that corner match that corner.
It looks like I might get away with no silver boot on it. Yeah. <coughs> every uh, squirrel finds an acorn every now and then. That, Cause that look well, except for that one right there. See that? Doesn't touch. Oh, yeah. That's the way you go. That's all right. We can put the silver on. Not like I got to be ready to fly it tomorrow. Oh yeah. You go out there if you want. Tell you what, I'll meet you out there next year. Eight thirty in the morning. <laughs> when I was a kid, I'd do it. But it ain't worth it now. Come on. I need a knife to pick it up. Because it can be mostly in the transfer tape too, yeah. not in the... Yeah, because the plastic will stretch, but the transfer tape ain't stretching. Yeah. Got to come out perfect on the end here. Must have done something right there. Got to be in the right spot. At least on this tip. A little off. Oh well. Break out that can of silver. That's right.
Taylor did it in the building there. A little looping of the TV and a little thing there, a little bone leaving there. <coughs> little scratch in the film. Start getting it. The sag in the sheeting, sag in the covering between the ribs. Well, fortunately, this doesn't get painted, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's only these lines here are the only lines that matter, and then we're going to put that other the blue tape up there. But this tip came out exact for some. For some. For some. Well, luck to have for it, Jay. <laughs> Yeah, really. Hey, my savior. Says, Skippy, you look so much different with the short beard. You actually look younger. <laughs> Skippy? Skippy, I guess you're Skippy now. That's what's up. Else. You did shave your beard off, didn't you? I cut it back some. So I've been letting mine grow out. You cut yours back. I'm looking sort of scraggly. I need to shave it back the way it was. Need a haircut. Get high and tight around the ears. Yeah, high and tight lasts a while. I, I need to... See, I try to let my hair grow out in winter to keep my head warmer. Yeah. And I let my beard grow out in the middle of winter for the same thing, keep my face warmer. And it does. It, it definitely does. Working good. So... Not quite dry. Maybe we can probably fit this piece of tape over. This one. Install these checkers. Yeah, you know better than that. <laughs> as soon as you get your fingernail close to it, it's going to stick itself down. I cut all my fingernails off a couple days ago. I don't have anything to pick with. It's a little off there. It came out perfect there, but it's a little off on this line. Oh, because we cheated that line, right? Or did we? No, this is the short side. So we didn't turn change. it back over. I'll have the motor out of it for tomorrow. I'll put it on that. Uh, Go on that side and look. I'm going to move this line back. 
Ah, I still live. So, so, so. You're going to have to just wait for the repairs on this stuff. I don't know why it's doing it there on it, unless it, because I didn't get enough paint down there. To pull paper up? No. I could go back. It retorts with nice that you're fine. No more. Can't. It has to go right there. Oh, to fix it. Hmm. Well, I'm going to have to cheat that checker for me. So in order to fix this, Is that where it peeled off the floor? Other side. They were, I guess I didn't get it wet enough. Well, I'll tell you what you do. Cut this tape off back here, put another piece of tape over right over that line and fix this after you paint checkerboards and all that stuff on there. I think it's fine right where it's at. Except it didn't line up with this. Well, that ain't even on there straight. That's got a big wrinkle on it and stuff, so that's not. It goes on straight, it's gonna come up like that. And they got the wrinkles out of the bottom now. And they're gonna intersect right here in the center. If this one was to come around, then you'd have a little wedge like right in there. And it's gonna be. But if you take this tape and pull it around there, then you can get. Personally, what. Personally, what I say to do is take that off, take that off, run your tape line, and hand tape those in. <clears throat> Because you're looking at this gap here between these two to line up with that gap. This is, this is the top of the airplane. Yeah. <clears throat> top outboard, right there at the wingtip. <laughs> of course. This is lined up good, isn't it? With the other end of the tape? No. Gonna have to paint white there. It's gonna be black anyway. Well, that's right.
Does the second line have to go back? You can use it, probably. Because I don't want to mess with it. I just want to fix what I got here. I know. Yeah, it's kind of chilly in here.
doesn't get heated up in here and then walking around on this cold ass concrete it ain't ready put a little nick in it right there it's still rather wet need a heat gun heat it up Well, if I leave it on for a week, it can't be no worse than what it had, what it did. We'll just heat it with a heat gun and get it up. Because it ain't getting done today. Once again, a bit off more than I could do. Figuring I could get it all done in a day. Yeah, that's a lot. Not to mention you changed everything again and sort of redid things. It's 4.11. It's time to clean up and get ready to go. Time to get ready to go. What a bitch. Just let it dry. Do it at home. <clears throat> like I say, I doubt I, I, I just don't think I can get it all done tonight, you know. So we'll even bother with tomorrow. But the next time I come over, she'll be ready to roll. Well, <clears throat> hit it. Do what you can. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you get it to a certain point tonight that you only got a little bit left to do, go ahead and tape it off in the morning and then call me up. Well, I got to get my oil changed tomorrow for sure. I'm like 3,000 miles over. I am too on my car. I've been dogging it. <laughs> yeah, I, I had to add a quart. You know? yeah. <laughs> I'm like, well, no, man, I know. I knew I was over. I probably got 6,000 miles on it instead of 3,000 miles because right. I should have changed it before we went to Cleveland. Right. Same and with I me. <laughs> Same with me. So, and. And that's, you know, I got to take care of that Are car. Are you running synthetic no. oil? No. I, I am. I run regular, oil comes out of the ground, synthetic comes out of a candle. Uh, yeah, I know. I've changed my, my oil every 3,000 miles religiously ever since the day I owned it. And I'm the original owner. Yeah. I'm looking at the brake job probably too. So I'm not a happy camper sort of dragging my feet because I know the only way... When I get things done, is I'm gonna have to have rotors turned and pads and all. Go to Amazon and buy new rotors, new pads, new drums, new shoes, just like I did. A couple hundred bucks, and your the parts are in there. Yeah, but Mama's got a Subaru. <laughs> it's cost more than that. It's probably cost two hundred dollars a rotor. Well, let's see. Amazon. 2013 Subaru Outback. 2013 SUB Subaru. Subaru. How do you spell it? E-R? A. A. R. U. Oh, there we go. Subaru. Disc front discs. Front. Can't remember 
if it's got disc bricks in the back too or not. RO front DI disc, not dishes, disc rotors. Go. Search. Do, 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 do. There they are. $52 each. Free delivery Monday, so that's 100 bucks. Premium front and rear disc brake rotors, pads, and everything, 215 Free delivery. AC Delco silver front disc brake rotor, 3315 Detroit front disc brake rotors with ceramic brakes, 118 So you got a lot of choices. Ray Best is $60 a piece. Detroit Axle. Just make sure you get the right ones. Yeah, ain't no returning this shit. Are you going to do the job yourself? I doubt it. I'll probably just take it up with Scott. Front rotors are an hour's labor. I know. I can do it in an hour. I can't do it if I had an impact wrench. Yeah. Yeah, that cost me hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> well, I could bring one over and watch you do it. And I'm out in the cold and all that crap. Yeah, it's easier just to have somebody else do it. I get a warranty. He get he's got the right equipment to turn the brake light off and all that crap. Because once the brake light off is on, I think you gotta get into electronics on it to get it turned off. No, there's a way to clear the code without Electronic it might be, yeah. Hit the brake five times, turn the right turn signal. Stand your head, do that. that. <laughs> oh, yeah, turn this <laughs> over. Yeah, there's a way to clear the code. Though. I don't know how to, but I could probably find that if I dug it. it. It's not, to me, it's not worth it. You got YouTube. YouTube would tell you how to do it. <laughs> I did more of my fair share of laying underneath cars and all that crap for 50 years in the past. I did all my own oil change, all my own brake jobs, all my change transmissions, pre-built motors. People ask me, have you have Jimmy Loop change your oil? You ought to change it? Yeah. <laughs> it's not worth me to get my creeper out and all that crap, and then I gotta get rid of the oil and all that shit. Got to get under there, get dirty. It's not worth it to me anymore. For an extra $30 or $40? For the price of an oil change, which is about 50 bucks now, that's uh, five quarts of oil, so that's $10 a quart, right? My car takes seven quarts of oil. Now you can get it at Jiffy Loop for 50 bucks. I got... I got uh, four free oil changes coming from Grismer, but you know I got to drop my car off and. Yeah, see, normally if I go up there to Scott, I just sit. I I pull in and I say, "Are you busy?" He says, "Nope, don't have anything right now." He pulls it right in. <laughs> <coughs> I go upstairs and get the paperwork. He starts getting all the parts and pieces. I come out and wait for a half an hour and he's done. Then he checks everything. He checks all my fluid levels, checks all the tire pressure, does all that crap, goes into the whole car. Well guys, I think I'm gonna end the stream. I appreciate you watching. Uh, we may be back tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. Fair winds, tight lines. See ya.